Hey, what's going on everybody? Hope everybody's doing well. So today we're actually gonna talk about how you can record percussion from home. Oh yeah, you gotta love it. Welcome to Tape Percussion Life, everybody. My name is Eric Perez. So today, I actually got the opportunity to record percussion for a country artist by the name of Larry McGrath. And uh, it's kind of a nice tune. I gotta play it for you guys. But I did wanna kind of show you the process that I do to be able to record from the comfort of my home. Of course, I wish I could be in a studio right now, but because of the circumstances, I think this will help a lot of musicians kind of try to, you know, get some work when you're at home, you know, and you could get a little bit of money on the side while working from the comfort of your home. Oh yeah, you gotta love it. But yeah, wanted to go through some tips, things that you're going to need to be able to record from home. It's, yeah, you know, it's pretty, pretty inexpensive could add up if you want to get all crazy with it but if you just wanted a simple setup there's a lot of things that you can do that could actually help you start getting started recording from home oh yeah let me walk you through that so of course the first thing you're going to need is a percussion instrument of course i have my congas the song that i'm recording on for today are congas and yeah you gotta you gotta love these babies, T Minor. Oh yeah. The next thing that you're going to need are some microphones and a microphone stand and some mic cables. Now, for a percussion home, I'm actually using some SM57s, and uh, I think they're the great workhorse. You know, Shore made these so long ago, and they're still relevant today. And just do the job. And the reason why I'm using these for recording from home and not like some other mics like I have here, I also have my AKGs in here, but you know, the reason why is because it's from home and you want something that is directional. These are condenser mics. You could look all it up the difference, but a directional mic really is something that's pointing to one place and really just capturing that one area. And especially for congas, what I'm my setup really is just trying to get here in the middle rather than you know on the side or the corners i'm really trying to get just focus on one area which is right here whereas if i were to use my condenser mics yeah um it's gonna be just uh just capturing way too much stuff you know it's gonna be this whole area versus just one part you know just focusing on one part and what helps is because these are directional i'm actually making sure not one mic bleeds into the other. And what that means is that one mic isn't picking the other instrument up. So this is great if you have just like shakers or if you have bongos or, you know, just accessories and minor percussion and things like that. Directional will really just try to pick that up. And you can use condenser mics to get kind of like an overall space of a recording. And the benefit with some directional mics is that they're pretty inexpensive. I think you could get some SM57s for about 70 to 100 dollars each which is kind of not bad for such a great mic that you could do a lot with you know um just look it up literally look up the shore sm57 and it's literally a workhorse that it's almost on break you could drop it and it would just work but it works wonders and inexpensive again if you wanted to just get started one of these depending on what you need is really all you need to kind of get started on recording from home and mic stands again they vary from price i got some very very cheap mic stands um you know, I need to replace them actually. They're, they're pretty old, but yeah, mic stands can vary. You can get some from like $15 to like $100 each. And yeah, again, they vary for the purpose and the need of what you want. But again, you're just trying to record from home, do something pretty simple, and it just needs to hold your mic. Yeah. I'll link these mics down below. You know, if you wanted to try to get some, again, just the other options. I'll put this mic on there and then I'll show you guys my AKG and you know see if you guys are interested in that as well ah, all right so aside from mics and cables and stands and all that stuff you're actually going to need three things which are probably the most important part to be able to record from home yes yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy three things but it's essential y'all it's essential so the very first thing is you need a computer. You need a computer. It doesn't have to be a Apple computer, but it has to be a computer that's able to run what is called a DAW or a digital audio 
workstation. Basically, it's your, your main tool that allows you to be able to kind of get this whole thing started and get this whole thing going. If you don't have a computer, uh, there's other things that you're able to do using your phone, um, like iRig and other other tools that, you know, technology is advanced, but if you really want to get to somewhat a professional type feel when it comes to audio recording from home, you're going to need a computer. So yeah, get a computer if you don't have one. And then you're going to need something called an audio interface and what this is this is basically kind of like the bridge that goes from your mic cables to then to your computer so basically this tool right here is what communicates the audio that's being picked up from your microphones to this device and then to the computer so basically this is all connected it's connected via usb the one i currently use is the behringer euphoria umc 404 hd usb audio interface yes longest name ever but really it's an audio interface and i got one that has four channels so i'm able to record four audio inputs all at once but again you could find one that has just two or or one you know it really depends on your need and your budget so you have to make sure what you're able to afford and what you're able to get and remember when choosing an audio interface just make sure you read on the specs and make sure it has good preamps so this audio interface the one i'm currently using actually has midas preamps so you know it's pretty you know pretty good preamps again you can upgrade there's so many you know budget friendly like this one at the time that i purchased it was a hundred dollars um i think it, the price i've seen it go up to 180 to 350 so it's kind of crazy for a four channel how much it's increased in value but yeah there's some that you can get that are two channels that are about a hundred dollars or one channel that are about like eighty dollars so it really depends on your need but again this is what communicates to your computer it's what you need in order to be able to get this whole show on the road i'll link this audio interface down below in case you guys are interested in this one and other options that i think will be you know something that you're able to use from working from home so like i mentioned earlier you're going to need something that's called a daw or a digital audio workstation now that is very important and there's so many different options but but essentially what it is it's literally the whole interface. It's what you're going to be working on. That's where your audio is going to be recorded to. That's where you're going to be able to edit. That's where you're going to be able to just add a little bit of effect. Literally, that's your whole place. That's where it becomes all digital. That's where all this audio that's coming out of the percussion instruments get to become a digital signal or a digital wave or a digital thing that you could see on the computer so you're going to be able to see all these crazy waves and yeah it's it's unbelievable just the the beauty of it to see it all happening while you're recording and then to see it all after and there are many different options i currently use logic pro 10 loving the 10.5 update by the way and there's a lot of other popular DAWs like Pro Tools or Ableton. There's a lot of free options like Audacity. There's so many things that you can use literally that are free to be able to record from home. It's crazy. You have a Windows computer? Get Audacity. You're able to do it. You know, there's something called Pro Tools First that's free. You know, it's limited, but hey, it's Pro Tools First and it's free. You could use this and, and actually get things started. Apple has something called GarageBand and you can use that as well. There's so many options out there for you to be able to use these tools to work from home and record percussion from home. You gotta love it. Now the third thing that you're going to need, aside from a computer, aside from an audio interface and aside from a DAW, and of course, aside from the mics and cables and stands that we talked about earlier and percussion instruments, the thing that you're really going to need are headphones or some sort of monitors. Yes, you're, it's so important. You, people don't understand that how you're able to hear is just as important on what's being picked up. Because if you can't hear well, guess what? The recording is going to suck too. That's just the truth. And again, there are so many affordable options. I think Audio-Technica makes a headphone monitor set that's for $50 and they sound great. I know I've used them before and they sound 
great and unbelievable. I personally use some custom in-ear monitors from a company called In-Ears. It's kind of, kind of crazy. I've been using them since like forever. I think it's been like eight years. I've been using these monitors for eight years and they still work. It's unbelievable three drivers so i got highs i got mids and i got lows and i use them for almost everything any live recording any concerts just church any any type of event that requires in-ear monitors i have those on and whenever i'm recording from home guess what i'm having those on those are my workhorses and i am able to do it and if i'm work you know recording somewhere else and they have whatever headphones and hey i'm gonna use those but i try to have my in-ear monitors almost everywhere i go but yeah, you need some form of monitoring and you can't use speakers because guess what? When you're gonna be playing along with something, the speakers are just gonna pick it up in the mic. So you're gonna need some form of ear monitors to be able to record from home. Now this isn't necessary. This is just an addition if you guys were interested, but if you see all around here in my lower level, I have this acoustic foam paneling and I uh, have it here in almost every corner but it really helps dampen the sound in this lower level so these are 24 by 24 two inches thick so they actually help out um, with the acoustics and relatively affordable um, I forgot how much I paid I'll link that here but uh, if you're interested this is something that's going to help a lot with your just the acoustics of your room and then I have some acoustic panels and these are about four inches thick 24 by 36 I believe that's the size of those but yeah I, I use that for more for the lower kind of feel but again this is helping out the room but in these type of recordings I actually want to damp them even more so if you have blankets uh, do whatever try to fill up the space to not make it as equi, but lucky for me, I have a lot more of these. And uh, yeah, let me get those out and kind of show you how I set them all around for this specific recording. So yeah, I have a lot of these acoustic foams. Again, they're two inches thick, 24 by 24 by ETS. I'll link them down below. They come in uh, this burgundy and that little charcoal gray. And uh, I had a bunch of these from where I used to live and that's how yeah, and I was able to record from home. But yeah, let me actually place these in a way where it can actually kind of enclose this area to make it just sound a little bit more, you know, a little bit more dead. So yeah, as you see, I try to kind of enclose this thing. Again, it's not, you know, sticking it to nowhere. Essentially, you want to have it hung up on the walls and, you know, but hey, this actually kind of helps, you know, just entrap the sound. You know, it's ghetto, but hey, you know, it does a difference. It does a difference when you are trying to record from home. But, you know, if I were to do this without, you know, any acoustic paneling or any acoustic treatment or without furniture, again, if you have furniture, that's also going to help kind of absorb the sound, but it would sound so much, you know, echoey, you know, so just got to make sure you do your best to, you know, with the situation when you're working from home. But yeah, that's all you really need, you know, just a couple of things, get creative with it and, uh, you know, just check your levels.
make sure everything's off in your house. So if you have AC, if you have a heater, whatever it is, make sure it is off. You want complete silence. Make sure it's a time where your neighbors aren't cutting the grass or yeah, your kids are running around. Like right now, my wife took my son out because I had to record. I had to get this thing going. So he's, you know, taking a walk and yeah, just had to get this thing going so I could, you know, just have complete silence and uh, make sure that everything's okay. Also, while you're at it, just get a headphone extension because you're eventually gonna need it rather than having your interface all so close. And yeah, you know, this, this little thing right here, helps so much. I got like a 10 foot or 15 foot to go from my desk all the way to my instrument. So yeah, just uh, something to also get. Kind of nice. So yeah, I really do hope you guys enjoy this video. Just wanted to share just the little tools that I use when I have to record from home. It's, I know it's a little bit different, but I do get these kind of questions a lot of the things that I use to record from home, especially for my videos. But you know, the setup when I'm actually recording a song from home is a lot different than what I do for my actual YouTube videos. But yeah, you know, I'm about to take a listen to what I just did and see if I'm good and make sure I'm, I'm right because had to write my stuff down, but uh, yeah, you know, good luck guys. Hope you guys uh, try this at home. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys have certain things and little tricks and things that make you be creative when you have to record from home. I know everybody's setup is a lot different and especially being a percussionist, you know, it's a lot different than, you know, playing guitar and playing bass and tracking piano because, you know, your room kind of helps make the sound of percussion. So I try to make my room Yes, kind of open a bit, but at the same time, try to try to entrap those good, go those good tones that my instruments come out and make. You know, so yeah, you gotta love it. Comment down below, guys. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.